Hi, I'm Devin Moose. I'm the board director or board president with East Somerville Main Streets, and I'm here with um, a few members of the community. Um, Courtney Kirk, who is uh, a city planner um, with the city of Somerville, and Smiley, who is a local business owner in East Somerville, and Jen Atwood, who is our um, executive director with East Somerville Main Streets. Um, we're here to talk a little bit about all of the wonderful things going on in East Somerville. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks Thank you for, for coming. Yeah. It's very exciting to have everybody in one place to talk a little bit about all the things going on in East Somerville. Yes. Um, maybe do you mind, Jen, starting us off with some updates about all of the events coming up because we're going into our event season? We have Carnival coming up uh, on June 2nd on Sunday. Yeah. It's from 2 to 6 p.m. Um, Smiley here is going to talk a little bit about what he's doing there. Mm -hmm. He's going to have a special booth there as well. But from two, starting at 2, we have an opening parade till 2.30. And then we have live music on three stages for four hours. And it's just a total blast. Um, we have four different restaurants that are gonna be serving food outside. We have tons of children activities. Um, it's just a great event. This is our 10th year doing this event. And last year we had 6,000 people come out. Um, and I hope we have 6,000 more come out this year. Yeah, yeah. it's a wonderful event. Yeah. Smiley, do you mind telling us a little bit um, first about your business and what you do and what you're gonna be doing at uh, Carnival? Well, I'm one of the many barbershop that's in the neighborhood, but um, I'm in a corner between Lincoln and mm -hmm. Broadway for Lincoln Street. So a lot of people don't know I'm there in the neighborhood. So I like to change that mm -hmm. by participating in the carnival mm -hmm. and make sure that people are aware of that I really I'm there. Mm -hmm. So um, we can provide good service. And this mm -hmm. is actually the first time we're doing a barbershop, including in the carnival, right? Mm -hmm. So that'll be really yep. awesome and give great haircuts. And oh, that day, I'm gonna be giving free haircuts from from two to six, something like that? Yeah. Yeah, from two to yeah. six, and then um, we'll see how it goes. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so yeah. on, car like during carnival, you'll be doing free haircuts for yes. tips that day. Exactly. To really kind of spread the word exactly. about your great exactly. um, services there yes. at yes. your barber and shop. And the name of the um, shop is Hair Engineer. Mm -hmm. So, we basically create, we fix, we do everything as far as hair. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to it. That's awesome. Yeah. Can you, for anyone watching, do you want to just give the address? It's 4 Lincoln Street, um, East Somerville, be on the corner of um, Lincoln and Broadway, of Broadway. Great. Yeah. And um, how long have you been at that location? Um, I've been at that location for um, since January. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just a little bit, but it's really effective. That's especially great. Especially the quality work. Great. Yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about um, the work or support that East Somerville Main Streets has provided to you? Um, I ask because a lot of times community members and people often see the events but don't know much about the technical assistance and help that we provide yeah. businesses. Um, I think you guys are doing a great work for the community and, and I'm lucky to be involved in, in that um, in that situation because I'm always been a type of local community person and to be hands-on working mm -hmm. with you guys mm -hmm. and it's I'm thrilled you know what I mean so mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to do more work with you guys mm -hmm. you know what I mean and you guys do awesome work Thank I mean you. Jen here oh my god <laughs> I, mean, I can't say anything more than, than that I mean oh she's been awesome that's uh, great yeah so. we worked with Smiley when he first opened yeah. actually I walked in the day you opened yeah, the day that I opened yeah <laughs> that's your go-to move yeah, yeah. and uh like we an got an angel fell from my <laughs> 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 well we worked on getting the press out and yeah. updating like yeah. your website yeah. and yeah. connecting you to the city yeah. resources yeah. as well mm -hmm. um which we should also mention that yeah. uh yeah. has definitely been an important yeah. um part of Yes. making sure our businesses in East Somerville are thriving. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. Courtney, um, can you tell us um, a little bit about the work that you do in Somerville and a little 
I guess it's a little bit vague, but um, kind of what projects are happening in East Somerville? Yeah, so uh, I am officially the streetscape and public space planner and currently the project manager for the Kensington Connector, mm -hmm. uh, which is the underpass, the pedestrian underpass under 93, um, which is a vital um, mm -hmm. pedestrian and bike corridor for um, people in East Somerville mm -hmm. getting to assembly, getting to the orange line. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a really critical connection. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been working with MassDOT and our state senator mm -hmm. and um, state representative mm -hmm. to, uh, they've earmarked some money for this project. So mm -hmm. it's really a total partnership um, where we can activate state money. We have um, developer contributions that will be activated um, as more properties around um, assembly in East Somerville mm -hmm. um, are completed. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, it's really b beyond uh, connecting East Somerville. Mm -hmm. um, it's, if you think about uh, go moving a little bit beyond that, the connection to Cross Street. I mean, when you think about a street named Cross Street, it's really a cross city connection. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is a, a connecting piece that's, you know, beyond just the residents mm -hmm. in East Somerville. It's really a, a full city connection. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's been it's been great having you in that position and knowing that that change is coming. So yeah, thank it's you. a really exciting project. Um, I am a licensed landscape architect, and I think it's a really unique space that you know it's easy to think about um, these. Uh, I guess maybe not so public spaces, mm -hmm. um, but there's been some really exciting work um, and underpasses in other cities mm -hmm. and towns um, with art projects. And I think that this has so much potential mm -hmm. um, to be a really great space for East Somerville. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know we're all looking forward to that. So yeah. thank you. Yeah, and uh, East Somerville Main Streets has been a great um, stakeholder in the process. Um, as a city uh, employee and when we have, whenever we do outreach, it's great to have a Main Streets organization to work with because they're very uh, proactive in mm -hmm. engaging all of the community members. Mm -hmm. It's not just, um, you know, the people that can show up to a night meeting mm -hmm. it's you know a lot of outreach and being able to connect the city with local businesses yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, very important um, community activists mm -hmm. um, the artist community mm -hmm. i mean they really play mm -hmm. an, a vital role in mm -hmm. making sure that the projects that we we work mm -hmm. on are what the community wants mm -hmm. other projects maybe yeah. that we can talk about yeah. um that are coming down the line are um since we're at assembly, there's also the Lombardi mural that's oh, being yeah. um, coming up soon that Megan O'Brien artist uh, is going to be painting. So that's be on the lookout for that. A couple other murals are coming, including at Mount Vernon restaurant, we're working with them to bring a mural to their space. And maybe Courtney, you can tell us a little bit about old Chucky Harris Park. Yes, mm. so uh, Somerville has a very aggressive and lofty goal to have um, 125 acres of new open space. Mm -hmm. And part of trying to get to that number is mm -hmm. working with um, private developers. So mm -hmm. um, the, the old Harris Park um, that we're right now just calling it uh, Cross Street East Park, mm -hmm. Um, is a um, underutilized piece of public space mm -hmm. adjacent to a new development. Um, and as part of the review process for the private development, we've been able to negotiate um, a partnership with them where they, the private developer is paying for the design and construction and maintenance of the Cross Street East 
Um, and it's a wonderful opportunity for the city to be able to activate some of the spaces that um, you know, we haven't had the funds to do. And we're really excited about some of the um, design pieces in the park that include um, an air quality berm. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, we're working with EPA guidelines that have uh, a mound that's planted with um, a lot of evergreen plant mm -hmm. material that can catch uh, some of the air pollution mm -hmm. that's coming off of 93 since this park is um, right abutting 93 um, in East Somerville. So I think this is a really wonderful opportunity to address some um, health, health quality issues um, and, and bring back this open space uh, for the community. That's yeah. really great. Yeah. And as a side note, we're hoping as East Somerville Main Streets that we can advocate for um, naming that park um, something where we're looking to identify a strong woman, maybe in Somerville's history that we could name that park after. Yeah, and um, you know the community outreach anytime that we have a park mm -hmm. or open space, um, we really want it to reflect the values of the neighborhood and you know having opportunities mm -hmm. for the community to give input on uh, how they want to call a space I mean that's really really important um, to maintaining the unique identities across mm -hmm. Somerville. Yeah. Great. Um, Jen do you mind walking us through um, some of the new openings of businesses. Yeah, so in addition to Smiley's, uh, Hair Engineer that opened uh, recently, we also have Fidel African Hair Braiding and Bonita's Hair Salon. Um, they both came on board uh, recently this year. African Hair Braiding is a hair braiding place and, uh, and sorry, Bonita's Hair Salon and Blow Dry Bar um, is a full service hair salon for all hair types. And Nyla, the owner there, is just um, really fantastic about uh, doing whatever it is that you're asking mm -hmm. for um, and making you feel really good mm -hmm. in the process. Um, and just Yesterday, we had a new restaurant open called Racino's, uh, Racino's Cafe, and so they do breakfast and lunch, um, and they're going to be starting their business hours start at 6 in the morning, so if you need wow. to get your fresh cup of coffee, I highly recommend them. Um, they do uh, a, an array of pastries, fresh pastries that are baked, um, and in addition to that, they have Salvadorian and Mexican cuisine as well. That's great. Mm. Yep. Um, and along with that, um, Louie's Ice Cream is open for yes, this season. Yes, thank you for um, reminding me. Yes, I've, <laughs> um, I have not made my way down there, but I, I know you have. So Many times far. already. Um, That's great. This is the problem with being the director <laughs> at East Somerville is uh, it's all about the great food that we have. Um, there's yeah. just so much to enjoy. But yes, yeah. Louie's Ice Cream open for the season, and we have um, Shaddai Restaurant opening soon, um, mm -hmm. hopefully. I'm not sure exactly when, um, but soon. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the restaurants you'll notice in the summer, I think we've had a lot more outdoor seating this year. So be mm -hmm. sure to check out um, La Braza and Gauchao Brazilian Cuisine. But they also have an expansion mm -hmm. that they're doing um, soon. They, have, they just applied and were mm -hmm. approved for their liquor license, so they'll be doing beer and wine and full alcohol um, drinks as well. In, in addition to their outdoor seating, we also have Rincon Mexicano has outdoor mm -hmm. seating. And um, am I forgetting anything, Devin? Um, no, I think that's, those are the main ones with like outdoor yeah. seating. As the weather um, gets Maya better. Soul also does yes. outdoor seating, which is great. And Ola Cafe. And Ola. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did see Gaucho setting up their, their patio. Yeah. Um, fencing, um, which is really nice. So yes. that's exciting whenever we can add um, more um, welcoming outdoor space to the community. And I know you help them attend and advocate um, for those yeah, applications. I've worked 
pretty well with um, closely with Ben there, the manager who's really taken off and um, has really big plans for that space. And I'm really exciting to see it kind of being upgraded into more of like a sit down restaurant with a lot more space and a lot more mm -hmm. service that they're going to be providing there. So it's really exciting to see where the change is coming. That's great. Yeah. Um, do you mind telling us a little bit more about um, the movie nights in the park? Yes. So we have Carnival coming up in June, and then shortly after that, we start our film series at Chucky Harris Park, um, starting in July, and then we have one in August and then in September. And then, so we film, we screen, have us free movie nights. You can come out and enjoy the summer weather um, at at Chucky e. Harris and watch the screenings. The first movie that we're screening this year is uh, Heart of Earth, Heart of Sky, um, which is a, a film about um, the Mayan calendar ending and how that's um, kind of perceived to be all the climate change that's happening in the, air, in the world. I think it's really a timely movie that um, is beautifully filmed. So I'm really excited about that. Mm -hmm. um, following that, we have the Immigrant and Refugee Film um, series, which is all, most, I think all of but one of the films were filmed in Massachusetts, and it's all about immigrant stories in Massachusetts, which I think also is, is very important highlighting our community and what's happening currently. Um, and then for our third one, we show, we partner with a, the whole film series, we partner with Arlington International Films mm -hmm. um, Festival, and, um, but for the last screening, we highlight the youth uh, film winners from that festival. It's just like, a, it's because the, that night it'll be dark earlier, so mm -hmm. hopefully some more children will be able to come out and enjoy that, that screening in particular. And following that, we will we'll have our annual foodie crawl in September, which um, I hope everyone's excited about as well. Um, and just to kind of give a shout out, it's not an event, but it's a program that we recently, and we have one of the artists here today, Stan. Um, we did a Windows art project at the now closed restaurant at East End Grill. So if you're walking around either at Carnival or just around, make sure you look in the windows because we have as great art um, now being shown in that vacant storefront. And I'm really appreciative that the artists were able to submit their work and mm -hmm. kind of highlight that area and make it a nicer place to walk and be in. Um, so thank you, Stan. And uh, I just wanted to give a shout out about that. Yeah, it is really nice to walk by and not just see an empty storefront. So that was a really fun project to see happen. Yeah. Um, just so everybody has the dates of the movie nights in the park. Thank you. Um, we'll be, um, the first date is July 12th, and we'll be starting that movie, that event at 7.30. Um, the next will be August 9th at 7, and then the next event will be September 6th at 6. 30. Um, we'll just be moving them up based on when it starts getting dark. Um, uh, yeah. Also, like just before I came out here, I had this great conversation with Smiley. Um, and something that we've been talking a lot is sort of what do we see as the identity of East mm -hmm. Somerville? Um, and I kind of was hoping that maybe we could use some of our time tonight to talk about what do we love about East Somerville and <clears throat> excuse me, what do we think it could be in the future? Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't know, maybe like you guys can tell me what are the things that you love about East Somerville? Smiley. Personally, from the, <laughs> I can remember from the time I came to Somerville, that's probably the best city I have ever been to <laughs> in the world. Because not only that, you can walk around Somerville mm -hmm. two, three o'clock in the morning, everybody's friendly, nobody's going to do anything to you. <laughs> and then the local people are really nice. You know what I mean? I just love Somerville. I mean, I wish I lived in Somerville, but fortunately, I live somewhere else, but my business is going to be in Somerville, which is. So mm -hmm. I love Somerville. So I mean, I can talk forever about Somerville, but I'm going to give you guys a chance. <laughs> <laughs> um, East Somerville, I think, is a really unique uh, part of the city yeah. uh, where there's so much cultural diversity yeah. from mm -hmm. and also so many um, gen different generations that mm -hmm. have been and stayed in East Somerville yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's one part of the city that is um, embraces their 
diversity and yeah. um, really is supportive of each other and advocates mm -hmm. yeah. um, across, you know, all races and ages and mm -hmm. um, really sticks together in a, in a fantastic mm -hmm. way. So yeah. I think, you know, it's been really nice to work on projects in East Somerville um, because I think they generate uh, really fantastic spaces like mm -hmm. Chucky e. Harris Park, mm -hmm. um, where it's, you know, it really set the bar higher for um, Somerville's public parks and how a community wants to use um, a space like Chucky e. Harris for movie nights and really mm -hmm. thinking about it as a community asset. Yeah. I think f for me, it's really all about the people. Um, and the neighbors and the community. Yeah. Um, that's really what it boils down yeah. to. Yeah. <clears throat> that's what makes it so special. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that. Yeah. Um, I feel like from feedback that we've been getting from our community conversation events, much like this one, um, the thing that I hear over anything else is uh, the diversity and particularly mm -hmm. the restaurant scene um, mm -hmm. because we have such a variety of international restaurants on our main street. Mm -hmm. And I think, I'm hoping that in the future, that's what remains to be what makes East Somerville unique and special and why mm -hmm. we love it. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a great international cuisine scene and like 80% of our businesses are mm -hmm. immigrant owned. 30% um, mm -hmm. of our residents are foreign born. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's a really unique area in um, what makes East Somerville really special. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you, I mean, why isn't there a different organization like, you know, in different parts of Somerville? Why, I mean, we, I know that we have a special organization in East Somerville, mm -hmm. but can we, in the future, can we get different parts of Somerville to be the same way as East Somerville? Um, well, I know that we do have um, the Union Square mm -hmm. Main Street, so yeah. similar advocacy group. Um, yeah. And one of the newest Main Streets groups mm -hmm. is the Gilman Square Neighborhood Association. Mm -hmm. um, they became an official group, uh, I believe, last month, mm -hmm. um, where Somerville's doing a lot of work with the Gilman Square Green Line mm -hmm. Station that is new. So the, the neighborhood in the Gilman Square, sort of Winter Hill area, are really um, pulling together to ensure that all the new development is you know, meeting community standards and they're supporting local businesses, um, the local artists, um, really making sure that Somerville stays unique to each area. Right. Okay, so different parts of some people have their own groups. <laughs> they can, they yeah. can. Yeah. They can. <laughs> we actually okay. have a- It takes community activation. Yeah. It's yeah. true. We have a member of the Winter Hill Neighborhood Association as part of our audience here. Right. Um, there's various neighborhood associations. Yeah. Uh, East Somerville does not have a neighborhood association, mm -hmm. so it's one thing that I thought was kind of interesting coming mm -hmm. into the community yeah. and serving the local community um, because I feel like that might be something to look at in the future because yeah. we need an organization that serves yeah. its residents along with its exactly. businesses. Yeah. 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 Right now, we, we have always played kind of a dual role um, and really kind of advocated um, and worn two hats in that way i feel like yeah so yeah yeah well thank you all for your input and being here with us yeah. Yeah, thank, thank you, you. For thank you for having us yeah. and thank you so much for somerville media center and vox pop and assembly for having this event here and inviting east somerville conversation that's right thank you thank you